Yo, the Still Spinning Podcast is sponsored by Athletic Truth Group, a sports training gym in Clearwater, Florida that specializes in pound-for-pound strength through the deepest possible ranges of motion in order to bulletproof the joints while transforming athleticism and elasticity. The owner, Ben Patrick, claims that his new system of training is far superior for athletes than any other traditional programs out there since they stem from powerlifting and bodybuilding and do not come close to covering the intricacies of the human body in relation to athleticism. Ben would love for you to check out his YouTube channel, Athletic Truth Group, where he's giving away all his secrets and daily YouTube videos which are designed to give you real solutions that you can immediately apply to your training. What is good, boys? Welcome to Still Spinning. I think it's 59 or 60 already. We're going, we're spinning, we're out here. Today I had on my boy Chase Skinkiss. I got to meet him for the first time when I was in LA. I think it was already like two years ago. He's a super cool dude, knows a lot about training. I've actually watched him before I could even dunk. He was on YouTube doing windmills left, right that were just disgusting. And I, I would ask him how he did it. And it was just really cool to kind of learn about his story and um, get get some knowledge on his training. And it just it was just so awesome picking his brain. And just a super nice guy. And it was a great information and he's a great example in the dunk community and he's got some experience um in the dunk, nba dunk contest helping glenn robinson the third i think it was second i don't know but just great experiences he got to meet the ogs of dunking like air dog and hanif and compete in dunk contests with them and he dunks on people in games and it's disgusting anyway it was a great time chase again thank you and i hope you guys enjoy we still spin and never forget that boys Everything under the sun and beyond. All right, see ya. Toodaloo. I just gotta work and you know I'm doing that. Never stop, never stop. Always in the track. Never getting off track. Whatever I lack, add it to my bag. And I got plenty more where that came from. But my price is right, I never change, bro. I don't get it done, get it done right. And that's every day, that's done right. All right, we're live, Chase. What's going on, man? Uh, how you doing? Not bad, not bad. First of all, I got to say that is the dopest home gym I've ever seen. I've seen clips of it on Instagram, but that is amazing. Yeah, thanks, is, bro. Dude, is that Donovan? Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's from the, um, the dunk contest was, last year. That was the one you were in, right? Yeah, they used it. Uh, Kevin Hart was doing some promo for uh, in Salt Lake for one of his shows and made that up. And I just happened to – Chuck sent me a photo of it like from online or whatever, so I had somebody reach out. And they just dude. <laughs> That's wild, dude. So, so I guess we'll get into that. But I guess going all the way back, how did you get into the dunk game? Because I saw you on YouTube before I could dunk, and you were one person I saw that had some good progress and things like that. Got your head near the rim, at the rim. I don't even know, but I always modeled. I was left right when I started, so I was modeling my windmill after you. I know that for sure. I think you probably remember I asked you how you windmill for the first time. So just take me back to how you got into dunking. Uh, so it's been something that I've been trying to do f for forever. I mean, it's, it's as much as I can remember. Like, I started, uh, I think the first time I probably saw somebody play basketball, I started playing, I was like nine. And then after that, it was, you know, the hoops on the door, you know, right. low hoops, all that sort of stuff. So just like everybody else, you know, you want to, you see it on TV, you want to dunk and do all that sort of stuff. So, you know, just hours and hours doing that stuff in my room on the Nerf hoops and all that. Um, I started really trying to jump higher, probably like late 90s. Um, Back then, it was just like air alert, something you saw in like yep. uh, in magazines, and you know. I've, since then, I've just tried a bunch of different, bunch of different things, bunch of programs, and eventually, like when the internet started, you know, forums and YouTube and all that stuff started really hitting off. It was, you know, just I'd spend all day just searching different forums, talking to coaches, and just learn as much as I could about it. Try a little bit here and there, and you know, just went from, you know, never really thinking that I was you know, kind of be able to dunk in games or anything like right. that. You know, the progress just never stops. So, you know, it just got to a point where I could able to, you know, be involved more in the actual, you know, professional dunking sort of things. Yeah. So when was your first dunk? First dunk I was, it was just after my senior year. Oh, how tall were you then? Uh, same size I am now, six foot. I mean, it was a lot lighter. Uh, yeah. In terms of height, yeah. Nice, man. What was the, what do you think your peak was with your vert? Uh, last year, uh, nice, 32, man. yeah, 32 was my peak. Um, you know, I haven't been really healthy since then, but, uh, yeah, definitely that was my peak for sure. I got at that point I had multiple, multiple videos, you know, doing height checks towards the rim yeah. and, you know, you know, getting, getting uh, real close if not right out the rim. Were you always left, right? Or mostly? Yeah. Uh, I started, um, 
I started training the other way when the uh, first time my knee started hurting. Um, so I would just do a, do the opposite plant warm ups, that sort of thing. And I'm actually, I can jump higher now off the opposite plant mm. than I can off my, off my normal left, right. Um, I can jump a little bit off of one, but nothing, you know, yeah. just like getting a normal one hander, that sort of stuff. So after your first dunk, was it just like push the limit, see how high I can get, or was it like any specific dunks you wanted to hit? No, uh, so I I think I put a put a, a little picture of this, you know, my goal sheet a long time ago. I think mm-hmm. it was in like 08. I had been training for a long time, but I I like was seeing real progress with them taking it seriously, and I made a goal sheet. And that's what, at this time I was just doing like two handers, maybe like a reverse or something like that. And the goal sheet was you know basically the initial was like to do a one mil. Yeah. Then it was, you know, getting outlandish. It was like a between the legs, which I never really thought I'd get to that point. Uh, but, you know, getting between the legs dunk was on there. You know, being able to dunk in a game was a big thing for me, you know, because I was a basketball player, not, you know, I wasn't a guy who would just go and practice dunks all the time. Yeah. I was playing basketball. So it's about being able to dunk in games, being able to do, you know, windmills and 360s and that sort of stuff in games. And then, you know, at the top of the list was, you know, getting my head to the rim. And, yeah. You know, at that point, it was nowhere. Like I said, it wasn't really like a realistic goal. It wasn't something that I really thought I would achieve. But I just figured, you know, have big goals. Always. And yeah, you aim for big things. You know, more than likely, you'll you'll get at least closer than you thought you would. Definitely, that's awesome. So, as you made progress, did you have any? Did you like? I'm having so much more trouble with my dribble dunks, and you said game dunks, and I've seen your game dunks, especially that one, that famous one. You have that, like, I think it was like a buzzer beater or something inbound okay. alley oop. That was disgusting. Anyway, I've seen a lot of your game dunks. Did you have any trouble but when you got your progress, or did the dribble dunks just kind of go with the progress as well? No, that was something I always practiced, and being that I was, um, I'm more of a strength, a strength jumper than mm-hmm. I am. Like, I'm not really a natural jumper, so it wasn't like I was much better off the run than I was off one step. I was, I was always better, you know, even off one step than I was off the run coming up. Mm. I eventually got much and much better as my technique got better. Um, you know, so I jumped the run but initially it was all power based and so i had a lot of reps you know just that one two one two steps in close and even now that's that's probably still my strength Mm. so um that's dope so did you have any specific drills okay so when you progressed right made progress you got your first dunk did you have like any uh, plateaus or anything like that because right now i'm stuck at like 42 and then like yeah Yeah, I i mean i've been doing this for you know geez 15 years yeah. so it's you know I've had lots and lots of plateaus um, but it's you know and it was more I'd be really serious on training for a while and then I'd kind of just s- stay with it but not you know not take everything quite so serious and it would stay the same or maybe go down or you know I'd, tr- I'd train really hard and get to a new peak and then it would plateau or it might go down a little bit I might you know start getting getting a little bit of in- I might get a get a little bit of pain here and there and my, my vertical right. down and then I'd train again, get it back up, maybe a little bit better, and it would go back down. You know, Just big hills and valleys over the right. years. Basically, the way I looked at it is over time, you know, over a year, two years, if it was, you know, if I was seeing progress consistently, then it was, you know, then I was in the right direction. It didn't have to be, you know, every four months I had to be jumping higher. Did you ever get at a point in your training when the training you were doing, you had to, like, got you to a place and then you had to switch your training in order to make yeah. progress? Or you just said, okay. So. You know, so, you know, like I said, I've, I've tried a bunch of different programs over the years. I've worked with, you know, I've worked creating programs and I've worked training people. And, you know, I've talked to tons and tons of high level coaches over the years through forums and, you know, meeting them in person, that sort of stuff. And it was just a never ending kind of kind of search for the next best thing. Like, you know, I don't think that any training right now is perfect. I think there's always going to be some, you know, some new thing that comes out that, you know, is just that a little bit better. And. So I've taken tons of things that I've learned from people over the years, put them into my own training, you know, tried them out for three, four months, see how it went. Um, over the over the years, a lot of those things worked. You know, mm-hmm. um, they I wouldn't say that they are all, you know, one is better than the other, one is the best. It's more that they're different stimuluses. So my body would get kind of used to one thing. I'd try something else out that's a new stimulus, get a little bit better with that, and then you know, just eventually they all all added up. That's dope. And most of them, you would you say like most of your progress, you is strength correlated very directly with that? Absolutely. Um, so f- for me, the stronger that I get, I jump higher. I mean, that's pretty much Simple all it is. As, as long as 
as long as I'm still jumping. Like that's the key. Yeah, I have gotten, yeah, I have gotten a lot stronger, you know, in the past couple of years. But you know, with with wear and tear on the body, you know, I haven't. I'm not jumping nearly as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, before, as as long as I was able to still jump and my, you know, still play a lot of basketball, still get max effort jumps in. If I got stronger, I definitely jumped higher. Did you? Did you try to, when you were kind of trying to break to the next level, would you kind of taper off on the jumping and just try to like focus on strength and let your, would your vertical jump at all? Or would you always jump? No, like I said, I mean, basketball was always my, my first and foremost. Um, so I was playing basketball all the time. Um, even when I was training heavy and, you know, jump training, training five or six days a week and getting, you know, extra jumping in or like having a, a quote unquote dunk session, that sort of thing, I was still playing tons and tons of basketball. I was always playing, you know, two, three hours a day, five or six days a week, you know, just tons and tons of basketball. Nice. Um, you know, at, at every single one of those, if there was a break in action between games, I'm, you know, getting a couple of attempts in. Yeah. You know, every time I'm playing, I'm trying to, you know, jump the size I can or rebound, you know, do, sure. do all those things. So it's definitely lots and lots of load in terms of uh, jumping. That's good to know. Like I've, I'm right now I'm like in a strength phase and I'm, I'm definitely jumping a lot more. Um, but before this was like my first attempt at trying to get like way stronger than I was. And I definitely didn't jump enough. So I definitely need a lot of jumping. Cause if I don't, my vertical drops quick and I could even feel it. Yeah. So like, it, uh, me, when I was trying to train a lot for jumping, I would go to the gym. I play basketball, I'd, you know, get really warmed up. I might go and, uh, immediately go work out. But a lot of times I would go grab something to eat, come right back to the gym, get my, get my lift in, you know, that way I'd have enough energy, I'd get my glycogen stores back up, all that sort of stuff, have enough energy for the lift to be able to get a good quality session in. But I'd, I'd be doing both in the same day. A lot yeah. Of times. Good to know. That's that's exactly what I did today. I dunked and then I lifted and it's going well. I'm just I'm just jumping a lot and just constantly making progress in the strength. So I'm just going to keep doing that till my strength kind of hits like a wall and I feel like really worked from it. And then I'm going to like take taper off of that and just jump even more. Yeah, if you're if you're doing it the other way and trying to you know you don't really have that sport or something to play, you mm-hmm. definitely have to do a lot more you know plyometric sort of work. Yeah. But the way I saw it was you know basketball was my plyometrics, so I'm getting you know I'm getting the change of directions. I'm getting you know moving moving in you know multiple very uh, you know based on playing defense. I'm moving you know without uh, I'm kind of reacting those quick reactions that sort of stuff that is plyometric in nature and getting you know plus getting your max effort jumps in. So I would just you know taper down on plyometrics and training, use, use basketball more as my plyometric, maybe have a little bit in terms of depth jumps or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, just have my weight sessions after that. Nice, man. So in terms of uh, like training and jumping, I know you sometimes you do it the same day. Do you like try to f- wait for a day for strength training when you're kind of your freshest so you can kind of get the, like the most out of that day or do you kind of save your jumping days for like the most fresh? Um, I, I, done different things throughout the year. So, I mean, I, I can't say one thing, you know, I do this one style cause I have experimented with a bunch of different things, but kind of the way I see it is, you know, a lot of this jump training that you see online is based off of track and field style training where it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's block periodization and it's, you know, it's prepping for a meet. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you're doing this training, it's not to be your best every single day. It's to be your best at the end of the cycle, right. which would their, you know, championship meets or whatnot, you know, you're still, you're still doing your training regardless whether you're sore, whether you're, you know, you're not your absolute best, you know, so that's kind of the way that I always saw it. So even if I, even if I wasn't, you know, my hundred percent best, which I'm you know, hardly ever my hundred hundred percent best, it's, you know, I'm just going to get as much work in and do the best that I can that day. Um, the other thing I would say about it is that, you know, I've been doing a high volume in terms of training for a long, long time. So my body is a little more adapted to that than most people would be. You know, just advising somebody who maybe just started lifting weights or, you know, who maybe doesn't play that much basketball to try to do the same thing that I do would not be ideal. You know, right. the body might break down a little more. But like I said, over time, I've just built up that tolerance to be having that much volume. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to build up a lot of volume as well. That's a good feeling because it's like you can just keep increasing. And it's like you keep – I feel like every time I need to jump, try to jump higher, I have to just go even harder. And that's kind of – it's fun, but it's also challenging. Um, How big are you on mobility? You still have like a – you have a full day for that or is that just part of your secondary workout? Yeah, it's just part of my secondary workout. Uh, I mean, warming up to play basketball, I do a little bit of that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. So I'll do some like lunge matrices, uh, you know, kind of getting those deeper ranges of motions. I do it as part of my lifting 
So you know, so I'll throw in you know some you know heels elevated, try to get full full depth on squats. You know, do more. I've added in a whole lot more lunges recently mm. uh, than I used to do. Um, you know, more. Be, I, I guess my focus back then was a lot more on just on general strength and not so much on the, on the mobility. But now that I've you know gotten older, have some injuries, right. things like that, definitely mobility is a big big part of what I do now. After talking to a few guys, um, they a lot of people, a few of them think that like mobility allows you to get that strength and allows you to kind of hit that next level of athletic athleticism. Do you kind of see that, or is it kind of more of just a health I, thing? I mean, so I I hear a lot of the people, and I know the people you're talking about. Yeah. And there's a lot of you know people drawing a hard line in the sand, and you know they can. If you look at actual studies, there's you know there's tons of science on both sides of the issue, and the way that I've always looked at it is to try to do a combination of both. It's not all full range of motion. It's not all partial range of motion. It's both, you know? Mm. So I want to do enough full range of motion to where my body is strong at, you know, the weakest angles. So basically I can keep myself, you know, I can keep myself training, keep myself available to play. Cause that is all, you know, when it's all said and done, that's the biggest part of it is being available to train, being available to go out and play your sport. You know, so that is a huge part, getting in those full range of motion, keeping yourself healthy. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to performance, you also want to push those high ranges of motion, you know, to be as strong as they can so that you can output as much force as possible. So for me, it was a combination of both. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my mobility is terrible. And like right now during this strength phase, since I'm trying to get stronger, it's, it's definitely one of my focuses to try to stay mobile because it keeps me healthy, feels like I recover a little bit better. But it's definitely taking a toll. Like this, I did squats today and it's like, I'm going to stretch again tonight, but I know it's just going to be like tightened up. So I'm going to try. I, right now it's not, I'm not too concerned, but after I kind of drop the weights, I'll probably get back to more mobility so I could heal up and not, not, keep everything balanced and things like that but it's tough to stay flexible yeah yeah i mean that's part of being flexible that's one of the biggest benefits of doing those full ranges of motion is that the weights themselves in those positions will help you get more flexible so you know just dropping down into a deep squat with the load on your back you know and, you know doing like a pause or you know um, loading up a you know stiff like a deadlift going all the way down to the bottom those things inherently will help you help your flexibility as well because you're being active while also flexing those mm. muscles, or, you know, to a deeper range of motion yeah do you have any favorite lifts right now like box squats i think i see you doing box squats has always been a staple of mine because that's kind of pair and you know i can see a linear correlation between that and my and that and my jumping but it's a combination of things so like even on box squat days i'll warm up with full rep full rep uh full depth squats you know i'll do um I'll do a little more power exercises in terms of uh, like jump squats or you know some, some hand cleans or you know sled sprints or something like that. If I'm if I'm in more of a jumping phase, you know these past couple of years it's been more just chasing strength. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, um, I would say box squat is probably my overall favorite. I like that. I think I got to add that back in. I've been doing full squats recently, heels elevated, just because inflexible. Yep. But like those feel great. But when I did box squats back in the past, those felt great because I felt like I could load up a ton and just be comfortable with that. Yeah, and it's it's also the how much it takes out of you. To, you know, for somebody like me who was playing a lot of basketball, you know, between basketball practices, games, all that sort of stuff. You know, you want to do something that's a little less taxing to where you're getting a good workout in, but you're also able to compete the next day. You know, it's mm. not like necessarily track and field or something like that where a lot of these workouts are from you know where you're going to do your full squats and then you're going to really feel it in your knees and all this sort of stuff the next day you know in your in terms of your performance um it's a big reason why i'm not as big on deadlifts as i am on on squats like i'll do variations of it but i'll usually use a variation that allows me to be lighter uh, my load than say a full conventional deadlift um basically because when I do those, I really feel it in my hamstrings and all mm. sorts of stuff for days and days after. Uh, so, you know, it's finding those movements that you can push, but also or keep you, you know, having high quality sessions the next few days. Nice. That's, that's cool, man. Um, so going back, did you, when you had, you did the Sprite dunk contest? Did you uh, I never did the Sprite dunk contest. I did the Sprite um, uncontainable game. Oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah. That was awesome. So do you have, did you, you did some contests though, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've done quite a few. Um, so I, I did Dunk King, did City Slam. Oh did, yeah. Uh, what, which one were your first one? Like what first dunk contest? 
Uh, my very first one was in California. It was a it's like a charity event. It was with uh, at the time it was Air Dog. It was uh, Hanif, uh, so Young Hollywood, uh, a couple other guys from out there in California. How much? That sounds awesome, dude. How how much were you dunking at those point? Like what were where were you at in your dunking? Uh, windmills, 360s, you know, those tap dunks, that sort of yeah. stuff. Uh, uh, at that time, I was big into trying to behind the back all the time. Mm. So, I think that contest, I made all, I made like my first three or four dunks and then missed the behind the back. And, uh, so, was that just like good timing? Like, you just had the opportunity to go, you couldn't have passed it up with those guys? Yeah. So, I did a, uh, not a contest, but like a show um, in probably like 2011 was the first time. And it, it was through um, Adam Lincoln Auger mm. had this show set up in California. So um, I talked to him online quite a bit. He invited me out there. It was the same, same guys, Air Dog, um, uh, uh, Hanif, uh, Tyler Ray was out there, um, Clint, who you had on, I think. Yeah. Uh, all those guys were out there, and Billy. Uh, That's awesome. So met all those guys out there for the first time. That's sick, yeah. That was my first time, like, I'd been to contests before, like, I've been to the Nike events, all this sort of stuff, but that was my first time seeing a lot of those guys jump in person. Wow. Being able to jump on the same rims as them, and that kind of completely changed what I thought about my own abilities. So wow. At that, at that time, I'd never even made a windmill. What? And I noticed that, you know, I jumped as high or higher than a lot of those guys, and then that just completely flipped the switch for me. Did you did you realize like, oh, this is kind of like its own skill? Like you can jump high, but then dunking is like its own skill? Wait, dunking is absolutely its own skill. Like, yeah. I mean, a hundred times better now than I was at that point, and I probably jumped, you know, jumped just as high then. That's you know, crazy. Higher. That's so cool. So after that, you were, was it like, oh, I'm gonna go practice dunking, or you just like, oh, I wanna do that in game? What was it? Yeah, so it was, I really started pushing my training at that point. I started having, you know, I was practicing a lot more dunks. Um, you know, I definitely saw a big gain those, those next probably six months in terms of how consistently I was jumping high. And I, I made a lot more dunks, but I was still really inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, I was just losing the ball a lot, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But you know, over the years, I've just gotten much, much better at the actual skill of dunking. Did you, did you... Like after that happened, you're practicing dunking. Were you like looking forward to the next dunk contest or just kind of seeing what's no. out there? Yeah, I didn't really see myself as like a dunk contest sort of guy at that point. Um, you know, and I've only been in probably 10 dunk contests, nothing nothing crazy. I don't I don't like go out trying to find a right. dunk contest to go to. It's more I get an opportunity, you know, and, and I know a bunch of the guys there, the quality of people that are going to be there. So then I might go do something, but. You know, I'm not a, I'm not the guy that's flying around the country trying yeah. to. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? That's super cool though that you got to meet those for the first time, those dudes. And then, um, so like game dunks, definitely number one by by far. Like any dunk that you can land at the game dunk trumps it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, dude, I'm the same way. I gotta get there. Yeah, being able to do any like I pretty much made everything that I do in like a dunk contest situation. <laughs> And games besides the besides the the one that Larry Nance did in the contest this year. Oh, geez! If you do that in the game, I mean, come on. <laughs> I've tried it a couple of times. I'm yeah, <laughs> dude. So in a game, just um, favorite dunk to do in a game is like a trick, like some nasty trick or a poster or or alley oop. What is it? Yeah, I mean anything with body contact. Is oh. obviously good, but you know, I've uh, I've done three sixties and windmills and that oh. sort of stuff. And those are always those are always cool. Dude, my dream is just the poster somebody and literally poster it up that's amazing that's so much fun um did were you are you from california originally no i'm from texas oh okay so what brought you to california uh i'm been out in vegas so i live out in, i live out in vegas and uh basically my my mom lived out here when i was a kid uh, so i've been been out here off and on and then for what i do for work this was a this was a big hot spot when i when i, I got out here that's interesting that the, then the dunk kind of the dunk life kind of started there too and you got to that's like such a great hub for it so that's yeah, not no it's not too far from cali it's you know it's a nice place a lot of people visit so yeah i definitely got to meet a lot of a lot of the guys who i got inspiration from to being out here that's pretty cool man how did you kind of get into it with chuck and tfb and then like getting ending up at the dunk contest the nba uh, dunk contest right. i met uh i met chuck for the first time in like 2009 um, it was at that Nike, the Nike uh, three on three dunk contest with uh, 
it's like probably T Dub's most famous contest. Mm. James White was in it, all this sort of stuff. So I just happened to be walking walking down and saw James White and Chuck and said what's up to James White and you know, Chuck mentioned that he'd seen my videos, that sort of stuff, which wow. is pretty cool. You know, I barely put anything out. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, Chuck like like me and like some of these other guys pretty much watched everything on YouTube with dunking back in the day. So, you know, he's you know, he's probably seen everybody's videos. Right. Uh, but so we met then and then over the years talked a little bit, you know, because it's not a not a huge community, especially especially back then on, you know, YouTube and a little bit of Facebook and that sort of stuff. Um, anyways, he put out a he put out a, uh, a status basically asking for some help for City Slam. And I was and I was like, you know what, I'm I, I can travel a little bit. So I hit him up and he was like you know, it's perfect. Like he took it down right away. It was like, you're the perfect dude for it. So we ended up meeting and traveling and doing some of the city slam stuff together and just became good friends after that. Um, in terms of the dunk contest, you know, so he's obviously a guy who a lot of people recognize through team flight brothers, that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. So guy, you know, people, uh, kids growing up, they, they watch the videos, they guys, guys that are big time high school athletes, they, you know, get their videos on there. So they all end up having a relationship with, uh, with Chuck through that, you know, just, you know, talking, talking right. through the social media or whatnot, you know, then he gets involved with high school dunk contests, college dunk contests through, uh, you know, through working with Intersport and, you know, being basically their go-to guy for dunk contests and gets to meet all these guys. So, uh, anyways, the over the years, these when these guys started getting into the NBA dunk contest, you know, either them or their agents, you know, started reaching out to him. So he brought in, he decided to bring in me to help kind of facilitate and, and um, kind of come up with ideas and and help these guys on technique. So that's where I started getting involved. Mm. First time was with uh, Glenn two years ago. Yeah, um, or, you know, he was a major underdog in that contest and. We came up with what we thought was a good game plan, and it ended up working exactly the way we thought it would. And uh, NBA took notice because the, the guys there, they saw us come in. They knew that we were helping him. They weren't really happy that we didn't show them the dunk right away because you know, we wanted to keep that under wraps. We didn't want yeah. anybody to um, So we basically just told them, you know, you got to trust us. And, and the next year, you know, after seeing what we did with Glenn, they – brought us in the next year so we got to work with some of the other guys that's really cool man that's got to be an awesome opportunity are you guys doing it again this year can you say or uh, i can't say too much because you know nothing's absolutely official yeah um, and when there's you know you don't you probably won't see anything until january right in terms of actually going to be in it and how involved or not involved we might be that's really cool so now you're you're training people right like yep. yeah still still uh do a little you know training in terms of you guys locally mm -hmm. you know, we got that bunch of bunch of ex pro guys or you know guys that play overseas college kids that sort of stuff will stop by and and um, you know get workouts here and there jump training like specifically uh, some of that a uh, little more athleticism hmm. overall athleticism you know some of the pro guys it's more keeping them healthy you know they just want to stay strong be able to basically keep their athleticism not necessarily push it hmm. uh, some of the some of the younger guys it's more you know really developing and pushing that you know yeah. it's just, jumping is that something you want to do like you would you like to be like full-time trainer or um i've thought about it and i've had some opportunities over the years um fortunately i have a decent job already so i'm you know it's kind of a balance there where yeah. you know if it was something that i could make comparable money and do it full-time and not have a risk then i would absolutely do it but right. you know family and you know kids and all sorts of, of stuff so i gotta weigh that risk factor that's really cool man so any goal like when the when the dunk community kind of like when social media pretty much came out and like dunk community got its own kind of just community i guess is the right word but what were you thinking because you were already deep in the game like been in contests been been seen these like pros and things like that what did you think when like it kind of blew up as its own sort of separate thing and kind of where it's at now it's kind of like branching off from basketball yeah i mean it's kind of always been that way mm -hmm. it's just been a little more um I would say, like in the early days of Facebook, it was more, you know, it was it was obviously smaller. It was YouTube commenting. It was guys just commenting on videos back and forth. You know, Instagram wasn't out yet. Instagram makes it a lot easier since mm -hmm. you just have a small video and you know you get to comment and DM back and forth a little, a little, little. Uh, I would say easier and it's easier to find those sort of videos. They get shared so quickly. Um, back with YouTube and that sort of thing, it's, it wasn't like you could just share the video, right? You know, to all your followers, something that, you know, that quickly didn't, it, it wasn't, didn't quite work like that. But a lot of guys did, you know, in the community that ended up becoming 
bigger uh, bigger members or like guys who were more successful in the dunk scene did reach out and did talk to each other a lot. You know, I met you know Chris Staples doing events before, long before he was Chris Staples. You know, I had Jordan Kilgannon, for instance, was you know he was he was the young kid who was trying to learn how to jump higher. Yeah. He would mess with guys. You know, it's funny looking back now. Seeing yeah. You know, our, seeing old Facebook posts and. Jordan's asking me about you know jumping and about lifting advice and that sort of stuff. And Billy just, just Billy just yeah. sent me one on his old video. I think he was doing like just a basic reverse off a lob, and it was like seven years ago, and it was me commenting, uh, "I want to do this." I just started jump manual or something like yeah. crazy. It was hilarious. That's how it is. I mean, yeah, it's always kind of been that way. It's always been that community. You know, now it's just a little, little easier and a little yeah. more, uh, I guess, transparent in terms of you can see who's talking to who. So when you said your that first time you met Hanif and those guys, it was like kind of blew your mind, like what the the you, your own abilities, what you could put your push yourself to do. When did you discover Team Flight Brothers on YouTube? Because when I did, it was like this is like next level stuff. No, and that's absolutely what that's absolutely was like. I mean, I I was already an adult. Like when yeah. this stuff happened. You know, I'm 33 now, so you know this this stuff was. I wasn't in high school. You know, I was already an adult and already you know doing all that stuff. So. You know, I saw the first video I saw that really blew my mind was David Thacker. Right. So there's a David Thacker video. I don't remember if it was on Flying 101 yet or if it was on like his original. I don't remember what channel it even was. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, David Thacker and Mike, uh, I think Hatcham. Or it was like Mitchell. Playground something, right? Exactly. Yeah. So these guys put out this video and it's like, you know, David Thacker is was my size you know he was a little more built at the time but you know he's six foot tall and doing these dunks and i just i never even knew that that was you know possible at that point so yeah. that just completely just opened up new horizons and that's kind of a big advantage that i see for today's generation and that is that all this stuff is so visible and it's just you can see it and it happens so regularly on on social media that yeah. a lot of people grow up knowing and believing that that's them and you know, that's just something that I did. I had no idea. Like, I, obviously, you see the NBA dunk contest or college dunk contest, you know, but I had no idea that something like that was possible at, you know, my size. That's awesome, man. Do, um, so do you think that people can keep increasing? Like, I, like people think of, like, 25 is, like, prime unless you're, like, NBA or, like, like mid-20s, but, like, how far you think you can go? Uh, I mean, there's, there's no telling. I mean, especially you see the guys who – the guys who stall out at that point are the guys who are natural. You know, the guys who Makes sense. basically started, they were 15, 16 years old and 17 years old and able to do a lot of things that they're able to do. Then they start tapering off because they don't, you know, one, they don't, they don't maybe keep up with it. They don't train for it. You know, there's, they have their normal life that starts getting involved. So they might have a family at that point and they don't right. have the time to put into it. For myself, it wasn't that way. So basically I, earned I earned it through training and you know I saw what proper training was was doing to my body so basically I just I stuck with it and stuck with it and stuck with it and it, it wasn't a a quick meteor it was yeah. just slowly up over time and as long as I, I feel like as long as I stay with that training you know and as long as I'm able to still get in jumping I'll be able to to keep this going for for a long time you know it's like a guy like my re you know exactly. these guys these guys that train you know they're they're able to keep that keep that peak going for much longer yeah and all this jumping and training though like do you do you worry about your knees like like mine are pretty healthy they used to hurt but i've, I've learned like what causes it and things like that have you learned things like that too yeah uh i mean i have basically ever since i was a little kid i've had foot issues in terms mm. of flat feet over pronation that sort of stuff and when you over pronate it throws your throws your ankle out of line which throws your knee out of line throws your hip out of line all that sort of stuff so i've had to deal with those issues. And if I keep up on it, I'm generally pretty healthy. It's when, you know, you only have so much time in the day. So, you know, if, if I had four hours every day to do everything perfectly, I feel like, you know, that's, yeah. there would be no limit, but I don't have four hours all the time to do things, to do things properly. So, you know, if I put something like, you know, that, that seems like a small minor detail, like, you know, working on my arch, if I don't take the time to do that, then over time it starts falling again. Mm. I start issues so I start getting knee tendonitis or you know that sort of thing and, and I've battled that throughout the years off and on you know but I've just also learned to you know once that starts stuff starts happening to, to you know put the jumping on the back burner a little bit kind of slower lower the volume and get myself back right before really pushing it again 
Yeah, that that's important, man. That's it's a, it's it's hard to understand those details until they like creep up on you, like you're like you're mentioning. Since like it seems like you know a lot about like training and details like that, did you like study it? Did you grow up like lo- loving it and just experience, or what? How did you learn so much? I, I just have just like a thirst for that knowledge. So I'm not, you know, I, I have kind of kind of read a lot of the books and that sort of stuff, but I, I didn't like take kinesiology in school or anything like that. It's more been just a like a desire to learn it. So I, you know, if I'm at work and I have downtime, I'm I'm online researching. You know, I'm listening to top coaches. I'm reading books. I'm, you know, at the, or, you know, from the earliest days of you know my availability on on on, on the lo- online, it was going to forums. You know, going to YouTube. You know, doing all sorts of stuff and just learning as much as I can. And I still do it. I still listen to tons of podcasts and For you know, sure. still still read studies and you know do all that sort of stuff to try to try to learn and try to, you know, basically some of it is the bro science of trying things out and, you know, just kind of thinking what's logical. And yeah. some of it is, you know, just the studies and seeing what actually has been proven, you know, so I just try to keep up on all of it. And how's your diet looking? Um, now it's more, I've been trying to, these last like two years, I tried to get stronger, you know, a lot stronger. I tried to, you know, try to actually look like I lift, not just, mm-hmm. not <laughs> Yeah, so I eat a lot, eat a lot more now. But before it was, you know, basically exactly what you expect. You know, tons of veggies, you know, rice, chicken, fish. Um, Always pretty you know, clean, though, right? Really, really. Clean. Even now, it's still mostly clean. Mm-hmm. Um, I still try to keep my body fat pretty low. Uh, but you know, before it was, it was really clean. Like that was one of my big things was trying to do the 360. You know, everything approach. I wanted to train right. right. I wanted to eat right. I wanted to sleep right. I wanted to get my water in. I wanted to you know, make sure I got enough sodium in, wanted to do everything, you know, all, all at once. I figured, you know, the little, if you have a 5%, you know, variation or like 5% increase based off of training or something like that, if you're doing everything right, it might multiply that. You know what I mean? Right. Definitely. I definitely agree with that. I'm trying to do the same thing from diet to sleep to training. Everything's tr- I even got um heart rate monitor recently. Have you ever messed with those things? I mean, I've, I've read a lot about it. Um, I've never bought one personally, so... Um, but I do see, I do see, definitely see the benefits of it. It's the heart rate variability one. It's actually really cool. I just started about two weeks ago. My baseline was way off because when I, my first reading was like the day after squatting and dunking. So it was kind of low, but like yeah. it's been two weeks and I knew today I would, I rested like Monday, Tuesday and had like a warm up day Wednesday. So today was actually the highest variability. I felt great. So now I feel like it's going to give me good readings, but it's just another measure. Even if it's, I kind of give the analogy of like a scale that has the wrong number. It's like, you don't really need to know the number if it's accurate, but like you just, if it fluctuates, which way it's going. So that's, it's really cool. Yeah. And, and I see the benefits more for like a sport athlete that's trying to definitely limit their, their, uh, I guess, exposure to injury risk. Mm-hmm. Um, being somebody who's really trying to push the limits of what their body's capable of, I would my thoughts are that you'd probably have to kind of push those numbers a little bit yeah. in terms of durability, you know, cause you're not going to take as much time off as somebody who is more worried necessarily about their injury risk compared to, you know, just getting in enough work to be able to, to get that seamless and change out of your body. That's, that's definitely interesting. Cause I had a day that I was like planning to dunk and I woke up and it was on the low side cause I had dunked the previous day, but normally without that thing, I, I based on how I feel, I was like, I'm going to go today cause I definitely have more in the tank. So that's good to know because since I am trying to push myself to the limits as well, push those numbers and make those better. That's cool. Um, do you do any cardio to, cause you play a lot of games or is, is the games your cardio? Yeah. Games are, um, now my training has been has been a lot of that. You know, especially in these past couple of years, I've tried to pack on more muscle size, so more volume. So doing doing high volume sets is, especially with heavier loads and a, and a more complex lift like a squat or something like that, is tons of cardio. You know, I I found that you know a weight that maybe at ten or twelve I start to struggle with that if if I can control my breathing that I can really push that set much, much deeper. Mm. And so that's something that I've, I've been experimenting with and, and kind of pushing these past couple of years. And I've seen a lot of progress in terms of my strength gains and size gains, uh, but that's also a ton of cardio as well. Is breathing a huge part of everything you do or is that just on those like next level lifts? Uh, it is a huge part of what I do and it's more just that being able to push myself to that limit and then have my heart rate rec- recover, you know, being able to 
push myself in a lift or something like that and being able to control it to where, you know, I'm, I'm able to push that lift or push that set or, you know, recover in between sets just that much quicker. That's, that's really cool. Do you do any like meditating or anything like that? I don't, I've experimented with it a couple times. Um, you know, I maybe need to need to learn, learn from somebody who's more experienced and, and, you know, maybe help me do it more, uh, I guess in a more efficient or proper manner. But, um, you know, it's not something that I actively actively do. I, I try to do it daily. One, one thing I have learned from it is that it helps me, like since I'm just focusing on my breath and my, my thoughts drift, it's, like, it's almost like working a muscle. You kind of get it to refocus. And that's definitely translated into like my dunking because sometimes when I'm in my head too much, I'm like, I'm very mental when it comes to like dunk training specifically. It's like I'll, I'll be jumping well and I'll be like, I want to land a new dunk or something. And I'll be like, I should be able to hit this. And I have that little bit of doubt. And I, that the meditation has kind of taught me to kind of refocus, do some deep breathing and kind of just visualize and, and like say I can do it instead of like should. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I struggled with that in terms of like making new dunks and that sort of thing. I, I wasn't the type to one, be able to just go in a gym by myself and just get into tons of rep, mm -hmm. tons of practice. Like that's just not, you know, I would do it every now and again to try to get better, but it's just not something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. But more than that is like, I see these guys who are much better in terms of the dunking world, you know, at, you know Staples and Jordan and these guys that are able to go to a gym and practice a dunk over and over and over without the success of making it and just have that mental you know, capability to keep pushing themselves to try. And it's just, I was, you know, if I missed something three or four times, I would want to do something else. Like I'd want to get mm. a make in you know, and that might come back to it, but I want to get a make in here and there to just kind of keep that, um, keep that kind of that mental, you know, uh, keep your mentality dialed in. It's right. something I'm trying to do is it you know, like miss a few times and then just try to jump as high as I can on the next one to just make it. It's tough. Yeah. It's definitely like, um, did you ever practice when you were trying to land dunks? Did you ever do like low rimming or anything like that? Um, not so much. We don't, um, I never had like an adjustable rim. I, I said most, I, it's more because I'm a, you know, I'm a lot older than a lot of these guys. Yeah. So I didn't have, you know, I wasn't playing basketball in the backyard. Yeah. On, on low adjustable rims. I would just go to the gym, you know, so there are some, there was a couple of rims around here. They're like nine, 10, that sort of stuff. So, you know, you, you definitely try to push it a little more on those days mm -hmm. when I go to those gyms, but I would just go to whatever gym I could get the best run at at the time and just try on trying wherever I was. It's awesome. So, is your do you you still is was that league you play in? Is that the Vegas league? I think it was. Or uh, I played in a bunch of different things. But yeah, are you the, playing in I, one now? Or uh, yeah, right now I play at a Lifetime League. Oh, uh, nice! Yeah, I love so those gyms. They have the you know the local leagues, and then it's all like national. So we have like tournaments and that sort of stuff nationally. Oh wow! So do you travel for those games? Um, right now it's like you have your local leagues, and, and like over the summer we travel to New York to play in a tournament. That's awesome, man. Any like any goals of like trying to make it somewhere on a team, like semi pro, anything like that? I, I've played semi pro, that sort of stuff. Nice. Uh, I've already done that. Now it's more, you know, I'm just trying to stay in shape and you know have fun and be longevity. Competitive. That competitive kind of outlet is more what I use basketball for. That's cool, man. That's really cool. So where'd you play semi pro? Uh, I played here in Vegas. Um, they had the little you know semi pro team, so I played played here. That's fun, man. Is that fun? Was it dope? Yeah, it's cool. It's, uh, you know, it's something I wanted to do, you know, to basically say I did it. And Check it off. Kind of experience. Um, it's not, uh, you know, it's far from glamorous. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I do like, you know, going to practices and being able to be, uh, you know, you have those sort of things where you can compete with, you know, higher level competition than just going to your normal pickup or something right. like that. So, I, I, from a competitive standpoint, I do, I do enjoy it. Um, but, like I said, I have lots of commitments from you know working working a ton to you know family having a couple of kids of now so you know it's more time management and just not having that uh, that time to you know be able to go and do a couple of practices and a game every single week for or something like that yeah are you pumped to see what your your little boy is going to be able to do yeah i mean it's a, it's exciting he's getting that age now where we uh, you know where he's getting the sports he has a wow. he's in kindergarten they have a little soccer team at the school he goes to so if they play other schools, he just started getting into that. Um, you know, he dribbles the basketball around a little bit. You know, he's, I don't really want to push basketball until he's older just because he's not strong enough at yeah. this point to be able to shoot it or anything like that. Yeah. So you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll do something like that every Keep now him, like, jump training, though, athletic training? Yeah, I, he does some squats and push-ups and stuff. That's awesome. 
well. Like I, if I'm gonna lift and he's home, I'll bring him out here and he can do his homework. Dude, draw, he's gonna be whatever. flying, dude. He can be in here and see see that I'm, you know, earning what you know, it, you know, my athleticism doesn't just happen. You know, yeah, that I spend the time and earn it. I want him to kind of learn that. What would be some principles you teach? And that's pretty interesting when he gets a little older. Um, I would say proper movement first over mm. over everything. So it's being strong enough to be able to move properly. So it's not like, I think a lot of people think you have to move properly before you can strength train, but I think you need to, I think it's a balance between the two. I think you need to, a lot of people don't move properly and they put themselves in, in you know, injurious positions because they're not strong enough in those positions. That's you know, so interesting. I think it's a, I think I definitely want to kind of push that being able to, you know, to be strong enough in those deeper positions or in the, you know, the side to side positions, you know, that sort of stuff to keep him healthy so that when he plays, he's not going to get hurt. And then we can always push the strength after that. Do you think, would, would you want him to go track and field? Cause that's something I regret not trying out for and not doing like in high school. I mean, some of it's going to be on its natural selection on, you know, what you, I tried out for the track team when I was young and was, you know, nowhere near being yeah. fast. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, you can run, long distance which i just didn't want to do or you know, like you're just not good enough to be a sprinter or to be a jumper so yeah you know for me it's just it wasn't in the cards but yeah. you know he'll have an advantage in that you know we can we start working on some of those some of those things a lot younger than what i did like i yeah. didn't really play sports other than in the neighborhood growing up so you know basketball was the one thing besides football that i was actually good at not you know not naturally but like good at in terms of compared to my peers you know so with him hopefully uh starting early he'll be he'll have a little more of an advantage dude he's gonna be he's gonna be a little freak out over there dude the home gym's gonna be awesome i see i see my daughter being the athlete she's really got, she's got that crazy like kind of you know competitive attitude so i think she'll probably be the dude the, the, really it's, it's, it's cool to see more more and more women dunking too it's like you, you've never you never used to see you saw like one person now it's, it's getting way better that's one thing I really am kind of interested to see is if she, you know, has an aptitude and has a desire to want to, to want to do it, to see how far, you know, I might be able to push her athleticism, you know, if she does, if she's willing to put in that, that sort of time and effort, you know, it'd be kind of interesting to see, you know, see how far that can go. How old is she now? Uh, she's only two. So okay. I mean, she's more just a, go. <laughs> more just mentality at this point. You can see her kind of their personalities and mentalities from a young age. That's super cool. I know this is this is on topic, but a little more detail. I learned from another podcast. I don't know if you listen to Joe Rogan. Yep. I listen to him all the time. Did you hear that one where he mentioned about like how genes can be the ones you pass down on? You might be able to alter them or something like that. Like, and you train so much, you jump so high, your kids are going to be probably jumping out through the roof. Yeah, uh, that'd, that'd be great, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was so interesting because it's like, if that's, I mean, it is, it's probably true, but I don't know what to what extent and if it, if they get the right genes, but like for all these people jump training, it's like the next generation of these kids that have all these parents training is going to be wild. Yeah, I mean, my dad was really strong. He looked away his whole life. So I can, I kind of see myself morphing more into his body type now, mm. uh, but my wife is really fast. You know, so that, that was her thing. So hopefully they get a they get kind of a blend of that. Yeah, my dad was super strong too, but more bodybuilder, no mobility. So that's yeah. why I'm kind of like bodybuilder esque with no mobility. Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to counteract that. <laughs> Whoa, Sorry. no worries. Um, anyway, I guess to end it, do you have any goals or like I know you want to get healthy, but after that, like, well, first of all, what's bothering you right now? Uh, I've had kind of I basically left leg issues. So basically, start it starts at my feet and. I fix one thing, whether it's my ankle or my Achilles or my knee or my quad, and just kind of finds the next weak point. Damn. So it's just a constant battle of going through all those and at the same time trying to fix the root problem. Yeah. So it's just a never-ending, never-ending cycle. But yeah. It'll feel really good, and then when you push yourself to a, you know, that's basically how my whole training cycle's gone. It's like you feel really good, you get all that stuff in order, and then once you push kind it. of hit a point where you're better than you've ever been, then it starts you know, you, they start creeping back in because your body's not that low. That's exactly what I'm having trouble with. It's like, I feel like I finally have figured it out, like the right amount of lifting and jumping where I can stay healthy and maintain my vert. But it really feels like I'm, every time I go jump, it's like holding it. Because if I don't jump well, it's like, it's going to drop. And I feel like all I'm doing is trying to hold it. It's going well now, but um, that's, that's the game and I'm playing. From listening to some of your podcasts and stuff in the past, I would say that, 
it, like from all the all the experience I have in terms of doing programs and like lifting cycles or designing my own programs and kind of pushing them, just know that you know the, you can't really gauge how you're going to feel based off of that first four or five weeks of the cycle. You know, you're you're going to feel you, because you're doing a new stimulus or you're pushing yourself a little harder. You're going to feel a little more drained. You're going to feel you know a little more tightness that sort of stuff. But if you've designed it properly and you're kind of you know. You, once you kind of adapt to those initial changes, you're going to see the progress start stacking up from there. So let I wouldn't really gauge anything until around week five or so. Okay. Let me give you a quick breakdown of what I'm doing and let me get your opinion on it. So I started my strength phase mid-July. I think it was like July 20th. But the first four weeks were kind of real. I was going deep squats and I wanted to build like a really solid foundation because I knew I could probably lift cold, like maybe like 250 max. I used to do like 315, but I'm like, I want to get healthy, full range of motion, everything. So I started with 185 the first week. I think I jumped up to 225 the next week or maybe maybe a little less, maybe like 215. Anyway, I think the fourth week was my goal was like 245. Did 245 for six, and then my goal was to get 245 times eight. I got that up in like another two weeks, and this was other lifts as well, but that was like my main lift. And then, um, so after I hit 245 times eight, every week after that, I've been trying to just hit the 10 pounds up, but times six. So I hit 255, 265, 275, and jumping all, all the time, jumping great, kind of maintaining, not really jumping that high. Um, and now I hit today 285 times six. And the other weeks I hit times seven because I kind of like, I guess I was like really building strength. Today, seven was rough, but I hit times six. And then my second and third set, I did times four times four. So my strength is still going up. What do you got to say? So I would say that as long as you're still seeing progress, that definitely stick with it. Yeah. Uh, basically, any time that you're doing a new lift, like you said, going to full squats when you hadn't been doing that in a while, you're going to initially see gains more just off of learning the lift and yes. getting used to the lift than it is necessarily straight gains. Yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't gauge the straight gains like if you're going to say, oh, well, I'm 30 pounds stronger or whatnot. Right. And that was the first four weeks was like, I knew it was you're like. Not, yeah. You're not really 30 pounds stronger at that point. You're just better right. at expressing it through that lift. Um, but, you know, if you're getting stronger or if you're getting, you're able to do the reps faster or you're able to take less rest, you know, in between reps, you know, that sort of, that sort of stuff is all progress. So, you know, I wouldn't just monitor the overall strength gain. Mm -hmm. I would also kind of keep an eye on those other factors, you know, specifically how fast you can move a load. And, you know, that's, that's all progress that you should be tracking or trying to, trying to, trying to push. Definitely. Um, okay. In terms of the style, like, you know, aiming for six and then once you get to eight moving up, that's, that's all tried improvement stuff at all. It's, cool. it's all very effective. There's, you know, there's a thousand different ways that you could program that are all effective, you know, depending on what your goal is, um, you know, for strength gains, you know, that's, that's an effective method that I've used, uh, you know, five by fives, you know, you have your one, three, one, three, one, or one, three, fives, you have, you know, twenties, you have all kinds of different things that are all effective. They're all just different tools. And just once you stall out and you see that you're not, you know, over a couple of weeks, you're not getting any more progress with that lift and that style lift and that style of training. And you just change one of the variables, whether it's the lift, whether it's the the tempo you're using, whether it's the program style in terms of the you know, six to eights. You just change one of those variables and see if you can get more progress out of it over time with the next variable. Nice. Okay, that's a good game plan. So mine was mine basically is so I hit 285 today. I think I'm gonna shoot for 315 times six. Not next week, but like in a few weeks. And the reason I choose 315 is because that's the most I've ever lifted. I think I did times three once in my life, but times six would be like a, a strength level I've never even been near. So once I hit that, I'll probably probably take a break from the lifting, get my athleticism back to a peak, and then probably get right back to strength training. One thing I would I would look at in the future, like I would definitely stick with what you're doing for now because you don't want to just switch to switch. Like yeah. if you're having progress with something, stay with it. For sure. There's, there's going to be time to try and do things later on. But try like a contrast style of training because that way you'll get that's that's one of the things that one of the most effective ways that I trained was contrast style where you're doing you know you're you're hitting the same sort of lifts so with the squat pattern or deadlift pattern or whatnot through different different points of the strength curve so okay. you know a slower heavy movement paired with a loaded jumping movement you know paired with an unweighted you know body weight okay as you can and then if you have means to do an overspeed method. You know, that sort of stuff all paired together in one, in one cluster set 
where you're going from one wow. to the next to the next to the next basically is a in my opinion a very effective way to kind of tell your body that you're not only getting stronger you want to get stronger in this lift but you also want to use it for you know, moving faster exactly that's very interesting because that's kind of why i've how i used to lift in the past is like every time i lift i definitely feel the need to jump soon after like within two days minimum or maximum because i just i feel like i just lifted it and as you yeah. we were talking about like i have that bodybuilder type physique it just wants to get like big and slow so yeah you could do like uh, a simple setup that you know other people have used and i've used is to do something like a set of four or five on a squat Okay. You know, something moderately heavy that you're working, you know, it's, it's making you work. Then like 30 seconds later, you're going to go into a loaded jump. So you're going to go, you know, uh, probably 20% of your body, you know, 20% of your squat weight, and you're going to do a loaded jump with that. And then you're going to wait another 20, and that's the same thing. Like a you set know, of like five or like, six? Maybe like four. Okay. You know, so you don't, you don't want to wear yourself out. You want to get quality work in. Then you're going to go you know, 20, 30 seconds later into a, um, an unloaded jump. So just jumping as high as you can mm. and you're going to do the same thing, you know, maybe four reps, just quality work. And then if you have means to do an over speed, so, you know, you have some bands or something, you can't, wow. speed, you do the same thing, three or four reps of that. You rest in between sets, you know, for your two or three minutes until you feel completely fresh, then go back through it again. That's really cool, dude. I'm definitely going to do that once I finish this little phase, but that sounds really cool. Cause it's like, because I tried, the problem is I tried, um, I don't know if this is contrast training, but I did like hex bar deadlifts. And then immediately after every set, I would do like depth jumps. Yeah. Did that be it's contrast? Similar. Yeah, similar. And, and basically a, contra, uh, a hex bar deadlift is more of a squat than it is a deadlift. You know, basically the same kind of squat pattern mm. in terms of how your muscles are moving. Um, so you could use that on a squat day instead of instead of like a box squat or instead of a instead of a full squat something like that. A hex bar is also a lot better to use for your loaded jump than just like putting a barbell on your back. Yeah, you know, the way your body moves what if and a hex bar is a lot more you know comparable to the way you'd be doing it unloaded. Um, you know, there's lots of different lots of different styles, but you know you can do it with you can do the same thing with de with uh, with a deadlift variation and more posterior chain. And instead of making it jumping vertically, you'll jump do like a a uh, um, a broad jump, you know, something like that, where you're getting a little more of that posterior chain involved, a little more of that same kind of movement pattern. You know, you could do you could do the same style of training with all kinds of different things, but it's just about more about hitting the hitting the same kind of pattern along different spots in the speed curve. I love it. That sounds awesome, dude. I'm I'm looking forward to doing that. Anyway, back to you. What are your goals? What are you looking to do when you're healthy? Uh, yeah, so once uh, once my foot is all the way right and strong again, I definitely want to make another run at um, at jumping higher. I feel like I feel like I'm stronger now, or at least as strong as I was last year. So if I can if I can just jump a little more, I feel like I'll be able to jump at least as high as I did last year. Yes. And have a stretch of you know three to six months where I can push that yeah then, you know, i might even be able to jump that just that much higher that's what would the vert be like if you jumped higher than you ever be what would that inch number be uh so the highest i've ever jumped is right at level with the rim um so i've got i've got a few videos doing that got a little scar love it you need that yeah that's so crazy that's, that's exactly the highest um so you know jumping higher than that would be you know right around that 48 you know Damn. 48 nine inch mark so that's a that's a goal Right now, I'm not jumping at that level. Right now, it's more just I have the strength, but I'm not right. jumping you know, to express it. Um, but like I said, a few, few healthy months, and I think I can push right back towards that. Dude, that's dope. You just gave me a new goal. I want a skull scar. That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a goal of mine. All right, man. Well, Chase, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate making the time. i definitely love to have you back on anytime you want to chat. We could talk about anything else, whatever, but this was great, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And uh, like I said, just glad to uh, help the community. And hopefully, like I said, when I started putting all this stuff out, it was more to just be an example to, to guys like how David Thacker was an example to me in terms of what potential was. I just want to be an example to those other guys who maybe aren't David Thacker at 19 years old or whatever to say that if you really work at it, you you know, you may not reach that level, but you can definitely improve. You can, you know, yeah. Just, who knows how far you can improve and i'm you know a living example of that it's yeah and that's great to hear because i'm i'm literally kind of following in your footsteps you're definitely an example to me so that's super cool man i really appreciate it
Thanks. All right, man. We'll talk soon, and I'll hit you up. I'll, I'll definitely hit you up soon. All right. Take See it easy, bro. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Try to make an intro and.